All righty, so as the slide mentioned, I'm going to talk about how my current team is using AnyLogic to solve yard issues. Um, so who here have ordered something from Amazon.com? Show of hands. I'm trying to look. OK, there we go. Oh, not, not as much as I thought. How many of y'all um, experience uh, order delays? So this could be, you know, it's going to arrive prior to noon and it arrived around 1,500, 1,600, you know, any form of delays like that? Couple of folks. Yep, yep. I, 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 yep. We'll do our best to minimize that. Uh, but what if I also told you that one of the delays that have occurred may have to do with yard issues that Amazon is trying to improve on? Uh, so think of it this way: um, You got on your airplane. You're about to depart. Uh, you go out to your taxiway, but all of a sudden, pilot tells you, due to the weather issue, we cannot depart. You sit on your taxiway for a couple hours, and you're a couple hours delayed to your destination. Uh, similar events may happen in Amazon Yards, and the current team is trying to analyze how we can improve uh, some of those um, uncontrollable and controllable issues that may exist. Uh, before I move forward, um, the current team is uh, three ICs, my my myself, Hafsa, Pranav, uh, we're data scientists, and we're reporting to Vamsi, our manager, uh, Hafsa and myself, I have a background in AnyLogic, uh, so we're pretty much the builders of uh, current tools and future tools. Uh, Pranav uh, is a Python guru, uh, so he built a lot of um, front end, uh, not front end, uh, prior and after data processing of the AnyLogic model, and Vamsi as manager overseeing uh, all the projects. All righty, so the presentation is divided into four different parts. Uh, first, I'll be talking about the uh, Amazon uh, supply chain network. Uh, and then I'll kind of dive deep into why scheduling uh, impacts some of the truck congestions and um, uh, going into details on some of the issues that were present and um, uh, got resolved uh, using simulation. Second, uh, the usual you know, suspect, um, going over the model and uh, discussing about you know, how the model was built and a short uh, animation. A third would be validation and how the customer is using uh, the model output. And final would be the conclusion and future work. All righty, so this is it. So what you're seeing on the screen, this is pretty much what happens at Amazon and our competitors as well. Uh, first mile, we have global and domestic suppliers sending us uh, units of goods that the customer can order. Uh, and right after that process, what we call the inbound, uh, not inbound, correction, middle mile starts. Uh, this is where Amazon-owned sites to Amazon-owned sites or Amazon-owned sites to other sites uh, transfer occurs. Uh, majority of the moves are done by trucks. However, uh, we have other uh, methods of moving goods from one place to another. So as you can see, uh, inbound cross-dock, um, this is a term that is also public as well. If you Google it, it's, the definitions are available. So nothing that I'm mentioning right now is confidential, nothing like that. Uh, inbound crosstalk, what it pretty much does is it breaks down the supplier's good uh, into different units that the customers can order. Uh, from IXT to Fulfillment Center, uh, that once that transfer happens, uh, think of Fulfillment Center as a library that holds your stuff that you can order. Uh, as soon as our customers uh, order, uh, click order on Amazon.com, uh, that unit from Fulfillment Center becomes available, gets packed, sent to a source center, and then from source center to delivery station, and anything beyond that becomes a last, uh, uh, last mile scope. Uh, so the gold um, uh, uh, rectangle that we see, that is the team's current, uh, let's say, jurisdiction, uh, uh, scope of sites that the, sites are, uh, that the team is interested in. Now, you may be wondering, OK, so how do we move goods from one place to another, right? So let's look into the aspect of uh, scheduling. So there's a team that generates schedules uh, for departures, um, ETA arrivals, all these details are provided. Uh, and usually, like I mentioned, 53-foot uh, trailers would move goods from one place uh, to another. And we repeat this process um, multiple times to ensure that the last mile uh, from our delivery stations or wagon wheel sites uh, to the customer doorstep uh, is pretty much fulfilled on time, guaranteeing. Uh, however, during this um, scheduling process, uh, it has to go through a yard. 
Um, and this is where uh, some of the issues may happen. So top left corner is a figure that represents a Amazon uh, truck yard. Uh, as we can see, we have the entry point where the goods will come in, uh, and we have different um, parkable areas, let's just put it that way, um, where the trailer could be connected to the building or the trailer would preside on its own, uh, waiting for the dock to become available. We also have exit as well. Uh, the bottom part represents the more of a journey of what would happen to a trailer. So for example, a trailer approaches a guard shack. There is a transportation associate within that guard shack who will confirm the information. Uh, and once that information is valid, then entry is granted. Uh, the truck driver is go either going to park on uh, to the dock, uh, parking areas, or an external uh, yard where the trailer could be hosted temporarily. Uh, but at the end of the day, after that process, what happens is within the yard, there are multiple different moves that are made um, using a, um, a, a asset called the hostlers, uh, where it can move trailers from one place to another. Uh, and at the end of the day, the trailer would either be emptied or loaded for uh, departure, uh, and they will leave the yard uh, once going through the guard shack, uh, where the TA, transportation associate, would validate the info, and off they go. They'll go to their next manifest, uh, the, their next destination, at the end of the day, closer, closer to our customers. Um, however, within the yard, there is different aspects um, uh, that may trigger some of the uh, errors uh, in terms of operations. Um, usually what we see during um, high volume season, which are our prime day sale, uh, and during peak season, uh, which is near Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas, during this time, the volume would increase to meet customer demand, which is normal for us and our competitors as well. Uh, and sometimes these additional volumes are either shared in advance or um, it, it's shared last minute. And there was a need to turn around some of the analysis uh, pretty much as soon as possible whenever the uh, escalation happens. And we all know escalations aren't fun. So the team had to come up with new ways to develop a tool um, that could handle uh, scalable ways to measure yard risk based on a fluctuating uh, schedule. Um, the figure that you're seeing on the left-hand corner is an example of four different schedules. Um, so SE1 is a one that is a go for this particular site. Uh, but as you can see, SE2, 3, and 4 um, is increasing the gate queue. Uh, you may ask, Jay, what's, what's a gate queue? Gate queue is pretty much a queue of trucks Prior to entering uh, Amazon's site, it, it kind of queues up, right? And you may think, oh, that's not that big of a deal. I mean, there's cars just trying to go from one place to another. Well, it becomes a big deal because it starts to impede other traffic. Um, and this became an issue, so now it's part of the team's a core metric that we track uh, to minimize queue buildup that happens externally. Uh, so these are some of the scenarios that we would run based on the volume, headcount, equipment availability, and trying to provide some kind of a metric to the customer saying that, hey, the volume that you proposed, I know you need it. However, it's going to cause ABCD issues. In order to achieve that goal, uh, these are some of the actions that you may have to take. So the first model that was built, I think this term was used prior to uh, from a different uh, presenter, crystal ball, right? So we have a crystal ball analogic model that was built based on our uh, standard operating procedure. Um, these are, think of these as uh, little boxes um, that tells the truck that, okay, if this, then this, if not, then go do that. Uh, so we have pages and pages of a SOP that got translated into an analogic block. The good thing about Crystal Ball is that it has a way to uh, process a lot of schedules. We're currently limiting that to 140 uh, schedules per uh, experiment. Uh, thankfully, Analogic built in this feature where uh, we can run parameter variation, where we added a parameter to kind of indicate, okay, scenario one, two, three, four, go select it. Uh, one model, one logic, um, and we can iterate through different schedule. And this set saved us tremendous time to uh, provide a faster turnover for our uh, customers. Um, so we'll, I'll show you a little demo on our uh, crystal ball model. Um, hopefully the video would start on its own. All righty. So Little shocker, I had to remove all the labels uh, per decision um, uh, uh, nodes, uh, but this is just for check-in. So just kind of let that sink in, right? Is the video playing? I think so, right? Okay, so 
the, the, variation, the, the different decision that has to happen within the Garshack of one transportation associate and having multiple screens displaying, okay, this trailer arrived, this information available, let's try to validate that, is that okay? Okay, so this truck is good to go before I send them in. Let's make sure that there's a dock. If dock is not available, if the dock were to become available, where are we gonna send this truck? Oh, okay, that's not available, so let's send it to the parking slip. Okay, if we put that trailer into the parking slip, now we gotta move it later. Then how are we gonna acquire resources? A, B, C, D, these kind of decisions happen within the guard shack, and that is a glimpse of what a check-in logic looks like. We have these blocks, uh, as we call it, that segments the activity per uh, standard operating procedure. And there is about nine, sometimes 12 of these blocks um, that triggers the move uh, to a yard um, accordingly. So that, okay, check-in is done. Let's go to dock to parking slip or parking slip to dock. These kind of moves are all segmented so that um, uh, updating uh, any form of issues uh, becomes more um, easier. Post scaling, um, the question became from the customers uh, stating that, great, you know, we're getting the data that we want, um, we're pretty happy, uh, but we need more detail, right? Uh, so initially we provided um, Excel output, uh, a CSV output correction there, uh, made it into a figure, wrote the doc, uh, provided to our customers, great. Um, that wasn't really, uh, the, the turnaround time kind of got added on. Uh, so Pranav and Vamsi made a way to create a HTML report based on the output so that when the customer has questions, we'll just send that HTML file with a bunch of figures and everything, um, all the metrics that the customer cares about in addition to um, improvement recommendations so that there won't be any files floating around. Uh, there will be a single file, fairly light, that could be opened up on any browser so that the user can see it. Uh, but the customer at the end of the day later on was like, okay, so we can now measure the capacity of what it's going to be on our high stress season. What about um, design? You know, what about traffic congestion? Uh, what about, you know, like, you know, we just want to see some choking points uh, within the yard. So after, you know, spending three to four weeks of uh, development time, uh, we created a new model. So we call this a free traffic flow model. We're using, mainly using the um, material handling library, using the transporters. And thank you, AnyLogic, for updating the um, storage. Uh, I think it's called storage. Yes, storage and uh, storage system. It had made such a difference to um, enhance uh, the model run uh, at the end of the day. Um, so it's pretty much a simplified version of what the yard looks like. Um, as you can see, we even have a heat map enabled. Uh, so the green uh, units that we see at the top are pretty much the inbound loads that are currently being unloaded. Uh, the bottom one is the outbound docks, so they are being loaded. And as, as we can see, we see a lot of activities um, at the north part of the yard uh, where a lot of you know, drop-ins are currently happening, and as soon as they get unloaded, uh, they'll depart the yard. Um, the second image that we see here is we added a safety feature. So as a transporter is moving, um, they'll go from one place to another. Uh, however, if they see a truck that is doing a parking activity, it creates a red circle. The red circle pretty much, um, the red circle blocks all the traffic that is uh, moving that way. So since I have a safety bubble, as I'm trying to park, if there is a traffic going that way, they'll automatically stop, which is actually something that happens in real life. So let me show you a demo, and boom, there we go. Uh, I can't explain what different colors mean, uh, but they're carrying something, or they're either gonna carry something, or they're gonna depart from the yard, or they're about to be removed. Uh, we have different assets, such as hossers, or bobtails, or box trucks that are moving the low from one place to another, uh, and as we can see, when the transporter, which is a rectangular um, uh, asset at the center, if the color changes to black, that pretty much means that the halt signal has been sell, uh, sent, from the parking um, uh, unit uh, uh, to the rest of the uh, transporters in the area so that the movement uh, could, uh, could be stopped. So these are some of the asks um, that the customer had asked, um, and uh, now it's implemented, readily available. For this model, the output will contain um, the number of stop traffic uh, and the average speed of uh, transporters in the yard. We have different uh, speed limits uh, within the yard to ensure safety. Safety is number one priority. Uh, and customers wanted to know, okay, despite having a max speed, with a certain volume, with a certain headcount, with a certain equipment availabilities, what will be the you know, overall speed in the yard? Is it really to the max? 
or would it depend on um, a certain schedule at a certain time because there's gonna be more activities congested into a certain dock area? Um, super exciting, super exciting capabilities, so thank you again. Alrighty, so now that I've gone over some of the models that were built, uh, now let's talk about you know, how, it's, how it gets translated to customers because Amazon being the most customer-centric companies out there, uh, we wanna make sure that even our internal customers understand some of the risks or the measure of the requests get translated to something that is doable. That's, that's actually very important. A lot of people underestimate that, I think, but um, uh, you, you, you can't just tell them no, right? You gotta, you gotta tell them no plus why no and some of the ways that you can actually improve it. So at the end of the day, within the report, a customer would receive something similar to this. Um, the utilizations are pretty much the occupancy of different areas uh, that are uh, within the yard. Um, and, and, and the gate queue, the first thing that I mentioned, right, impeding the public traffic, which is a big deal, um, uh, it goes up gradually. Uh, the user can, you know, come to a conclusion that, okay, dock door, it looks okay, but we can see that the parking slips are piling up. Uh, we don't really know why that's the case, but let, let's look at the doctor utilization. Pretty much right before that happens, perhaps a, th there's a large number of you know, trailers or trucks that may have to enter the yard that may have to pick up something that they can't, right? So therefore, that explains the high uh, queue that is piling up in front of the guard shack. And those are some of the self-driven recommendations that the customer could conclude and they can contact us for additional data points since we um, upload all the outputs and inputs into the S3 bucket. Um, the next thing that I would like to mention is validation. Uh, so as, as everyone knows, uh, Amazon is one of the most data-centric uh, companies out there. Um, these are some of the dummy numbers to kind of provide some of the things that we're uh, working on. Uh, but in, in terms of yard, we have uh, four uh, to six maybe uh, active tables that currently captures all the movements um, that is happening in the yard. So they could, this could be a pickup, this could be asset moving from one place to another. Uh, there's additional tables that measures a dock processing time and all these different things that I, I didn't even know it even existed, right? With using that information, the first thing that the team confirms is, uh, does it make sense? Does the output make sense? And we'll compare the utilizations with the um, actuals, what had happened, uh, versus the simulation output, uh, especially when we're uh, building the new tool, we do validate it based on the uh, actual schedule that we have, or readily available. Um, and the next thing, once validation is done, is we will run different uh, scenarios. So the bottom table represents scenario one through five. Uh, Pranav and Vamsi have built this, uh, which is saving us tons of time to um, output and share the results with the customer. So with one click, assuming all the inputs and everything and model build uh, validation had gone well, with one click, you can run about, um, you know, like you can have the output ready within, within 10 minutes, I would confidently say, because that's our uh, turnover time. So let's say one site in LA is having issues with the new schedule, um, they wanna check what the, um, you know, the volume capability of that site is. We run these scenarios, we tell them this didn't work, because of ABC, that didn't work because of ABC, but scenario five is going to be your best bet. There you go. And they'll get the report saying that, okay, different metrics, check, check, check. Oh, this is an issue. However, recommendation states that mitigation plans ABC, you can actually do this volume. Uh, last but not least, conclusion, right? Um, so the team is currently focused on ensuring the operability of a current uh, yard based on the headcount, equipment availability, and based on the design, can they actually execute the future volume that the site is supposed to uh, manage? So is, these are some of the checks that we do pretty much constantly, and this, is, um, uh, uh, this area is more of um, you know, running in the background constantly to ensure that, okay, based on the forecast, you can actually do this. Uh, but however, with this region, the forecast had changed to a different threshold with different scheduling components. Therefore, you cannot achieve that. So these are some of the back and forth that we have with our customers, ensuring that the on-time delivery is pretty much um, uh, close to being guaranteed. The second point, uh, operational uh, capacity setting. So in order to provide a table with site names and maximum volume, you also have to ensure that you can actually run all those sites, right? 
Uh, fortunately, we have all the input data ready to go for these sites. After tons and tons of validation and updating tons and tons of tables, we have this. Um, however, the values do change constantly uh, because it's coming from a management system. Uh, but we would like to make sure that this information is being sent to the customers so that whoever that is on site can look at this report and say, uh, this is yes or no. And if it's no, they can contact us for uh, additional details. Um, uh, tactical, uh, yep, and to, con to conclude, uh, future work. As I mentioned before, Amazon has one, is one of the most data-centric companies out there. Uh, we have a, a lot of data that we can work with. Currently, we're mainly focused on um, uh, physical infrastructure and headcount and equipment data sets, uh, but we would like to expand that scope so that we can further validate the model in depth uh, and uh, provide you know, better output for the customer because the question uh, pretty much gets added on as we move forward uh, into, you know, okay, back in the day we only had uh, three figures, now we have five, therefore there's questions about, well, what about the sixth table? Or what about the sixth figure that could add additional value? So these are some of the areas that the team is currently expanding. Um, and last but not least, AnyLogic Cloud. Um, very uh, smooth platform uh, so far. Um, and uh, it's still currently being tested out, uh, but soon the crystal ball that, that my colleague had built, uh, Hafsa, the process-based model, uh, is soon to be shared on um, AnyLogic Cloud, where uh, anyone internally uh, could pretty much run that model to see yard risk based on the uh, variating inputs that could be uh, uploaded. All righty, um, let me conclude my presentation, and I'll move it over to Q&A. Hey, great presentation. Yep. Could you go back to the last but one slide, the previous one? Yeah. Yep. So your ultimate goal is determine the yard utilization, mm -hmm. dock utilization, yep. and then the hostler's utilization. That is the ultimate goal, right? That, that's what you're trying to do during the peaks, especially. You don't have that available in your system. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hoping this is connected to your WMS, correct? So the question was, um, these are some of the metrics. Is this the metrics that we're tracking, and is this uh, connected with some kind of a management system? Yeah. Correct. All right. Yeah. So these are one of the few uh, metrics that we capture. However, the most important one, as you have mentioned, um, and is it connected to our um, uh, some kind of management system? So the the actuals come come the actuals come from the management system. We call it the yard management system. You know, mm -hmm. any name. Um, and based on that information, we do the comparison pretty much. However, uh, this is the output of the simulation, so that we do the analysis and we provide um, uh, the, the, the output to the customer. So this would be the simulation output, but we do have the actuals in a separate table. You, your customer is your own internal? Yes. Mm -hmm. Internal IT I am warehouse team or yard management team. So we have two different customers. We have the corporate customers uh, where they're more worried about which region would have a red flag based on a, a volume you know, update, let's put it that way. Uh, we also have uh, on-site customers, so Tom Operations, Transportation Operations Management, uh, that Tom team manages the yard. Uh, they also have concerns as well, mm -hmm. um, and we're serving to customer sets uh, at this time. OK, thank you. Yep. I got, got oh. one over here to your left. How's it going? Yep. Um, did I perceive correctly that you're using free space navigation in the yard? Yes. Okay. So, yep, this one. So this is using, oh, sorry, I, I didn't let you finish your question. I think you know my question. I was just surprised that that was free space and not path. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask if there was a reason for that. All righty, so the question was, why are we not using path guided um, uh, but using free space? So that's actually a really great point. In terms of build time for path guided, it was taking way too long. Um, as you well may know, the team wants faster turnaround, right? We can't sit there, place one you know, circular node, connect it to a different node, and do all that. Um, for smaller sites, it works. However, for bigger sites and future sites, uh, that, that becomes very challenging. And the other thing is, as we're building the model, if you want to change a couple things, right, we would have to back and forth with a lot of changes on X and Y axis of these, all these different nodes and paths. So as we're building the uh, free path, um, transporter-based, material handling library-based model, the, the, one of the key criteria was we need to build a yard in 10 minutes. 
that, that's it. That's the only time that you're gonna get. Right now it's about 15, depending on how you're familiar with, but the only building block for this model is storage, walls, rectangular nodes, and yeah, I think that's it. And, and, and transporter agents and all that kind of stuff. But in, in terms of physical placement, those are the three main components. Everything, every, all the logic, all the moves, you know, we have like, you know, transfer to go to, you know, delay and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of building the model, uh, that, that's pretty much it. So we want to simplify the build project, which was very important for the team because during the normal time, it's fine. But when the team shines is during the prime and, you know, high volume season. Uh, so we wanted to suffice that for other customers. No more questions? All righty, thank you so much. Enjoyed your lunch. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you.